Hello and welcome to this AE Basics tutorial when we're starting to look at text creation and animation in After Effects. Of course After Effects is a motion graphics package and a lot of the work it does is creating brilliant text and moving it around so that it looks cool. Now one thing to notice when you're working with text that there is actually a workspace for text. It can either be found under Windows Workspace Text or it can be found under the Workspace drop down over here where we go from Standard to Text. And it brings for the panels that you'll most need. So you've got your paragraph panels and your actual text panels up here for creating the characters themselves. However, before we get into that, the first tutorial is simply to show you that there are two ways of creating text. You've got a text tool over here in the toolbar menu where you can create either horizontal text or vertical text, depending on what you want to create. I'm just going to create horizontal text, but I want to show you that there are two ways of creating text. Now I have a particularly big font, but that just helps to demonstrate. You select the text tool, click in the window, and I can start typing. This is point text. Now I've clicked and started typing to create point text. Now the thing about point text is point text scrolls off the screen. So if I choose my selection tool again and start to move it around, you can see that it actually goes off the screen. Now if I wanted to make it fit the screen, I'd have to change the font size. And to do that, I need to select all of the letters. And the simplest way of doing that is double click on the layer. Double click on the layer, all of them are selected and I can actually change the size of my font and bring it down so it all fits on the screen. And then again, select my selection tool. Of course, if you do actually happen to hit V, you will get rid of all the text because you're in the text tool. So if I show you, V would usually select it, but of course, in this instance, a V will just give me a V. So you need to go edit do typing and then either hit enter on the number pad and then hit V or simplest way is just to click the selection tool here so that is point text however there is one other way of creating text I'm just going to turn the eyeball off for that layer deselect it nothing is selected the second way is to create area text which scrolls and you can create any size area that you wish now what do I mean by that if I select my text tool and I click and drag you can't quite see it against this blank background, but if I let go, you'll suddenly see a text box has been created. Now, I'm going to just reduce the size of my font a bit here just to give a better view. And if I go, this is area type in, and you can't see it because it's gone outside. But notice that it's not gone straight across the page. It's restricted itself to a specific area, this area type. And notice this bottom right hand corner. This is a little plus sign now. As well as having the sort of the corner as you've got up here, you've also got sort of the whole thing showing a plus, which is telling me that more text is available than is actually shown. And if I get the little arrow key, I can pull it down and we can then start to change how we can see all these bits of text. So if I wanted to, I can make it all in a straight line or I can make it one single line by moving the area. So I've created an area and I can carry on typing if I want to create a different way of seeing this text. So this is the area type tool. However, there is a little gotcha on this and I'll just show you that. While the text is selected and the area is available, I can change the area quite simply here. But if I were to select away and choose the selection tool and come back to it and click on it, I've got handles. Now these handles are not the same. These are the viewable area. So as I move those around, I'm not going to change how the text flows. So if I control Z to undo. Now if I want to change the area again, I need to double click the layer to make sure it's selected, get the bounding box, and then I can change how the text is actually shown or flows within this area type tool. So those are the two ways of creating text. One is the point type tool, where you just click and start typing and it goes off screen. And the second one is the area type tool, one final thing to show you is that you do actually have some boundaries for creation of text. If I show you, it's just here in this grid and guides option just next to the magnification drop down. If you click on there, you'll see one that says title oblique action safe. I'm just going to turn off that layer so we can see it clearly. 
This is giving us a title safe area, which is this inner box. And we've got 4x3 and widescreen, as the inner ones are 4x3. So this would be the title safe for 4x3. And this is the title safe for the 9, 16x9. And you've got action safe, which is the outer box. So the outer box for the 4x3, outer box by 16x9. Now what do we mean by that? It actually goes back to the old days when televisions were made of tubes and tubes had curved edges. And the general rule was that if you go beyond this area with text, then it's likely that it'll start to distort and may not be properly readable. And for action, it says if you go beyond this area for action, it might well actually be cropped. So stay within the title safe, stay within the action safe boundaries is what it says. So if you were creating text and you wanted to stay within the title safe boundaries, you would click and hold at the top left hand corner and drag down to the bottom right hand corner and let go and your area has been created. And of course if you get it wrong you can still go in with these handles and make sure it's absolutely right. And that would be safe. Now it's just worth saying that these are not hard and fast rules anymore. We don't work with tubes very much, very few people have them. So therefore if you do feel that you want to create text that goes outside or breaks these rules, it's not the end of the world. But I would say that it's worth having a good reason for doing it. If you've got a good reason for going outside this box, artistic, production, whatever it might be, then fair enough. But for good practice, I would stick within the boxes. I hope you found this tutorial useful. In the next tutorial, we're actually going to get into the character panel and look at all the options in there. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching.